And I see that too. And as we were looking at the life of Joseph, uh, to our Sunday school class as well, concerning that Lord does have a particular timetable and things that go on accordingly. And all we are told to do is to walk by faith, not by sight. And you know, it's hard to do for us. It's really hard to do. You know, let's, let's be honest. It's hard to walk by faith and not by sight because we're used to having that sight thing and looking at things. But many times we just have to walk by faith and say, Lord, okay, it's in your hands. But it's also in his time. So let's look, let's look at that as well, with all that as well. We do welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are here with us this morning. And we have announcements on the opposite side of the page. You'll notice just a few things today. After the morning worship, for a short time, we'll have a business meeting. Um, so that will take place. Uh, also, um, next, uh, uh, well, this coming Thursday is uh, May 1st. It's the first Thursday in May. Uh, be a National Day of Prayer at Griffith Park in Old Town from 12.15 to 12.45. Uh, 1215 to 1245 at, at Griffith Park, so keep that in mind if you are able to be there this coming Thursday. Uh, next Sunday, we'll have a Mother's Day banquet where the men will be cooking and cleaning, uh, as well as cooking up and preparing everything next Sunday, and also cleaning up afterwards. So this is to honor all mothers, so we will have a Mother's Day banquet next Sunday. No evening worship next Sunday. Uh, on the 11th, of course, is Mother's Day um, a day is set aside nationally for Mother's Day on the 11th, so that's the second Sunday in May, and no evening worship that evening, so keep that in mind uh, of things that are and, uh, and have taken place as far as with that. Also, just let me be aware of, uh, of things as far as financial, because I know some people will stay and some will not stay. We uh, donated $720 to the Crisis Pregnancy Help Center, uh, this was money that was in the WMU and also money we collected through selling of the calendars uh, as far as all that. So we, we uh, buy you Baptist Church uh, basically to help the, press, uh, the Crisis Pregnancy Center, that's Passion for Purity and, and the other things, help with pregnancy, pregnancy and with pregnant women and everything else. So we as a church gave to them, donated $720. So just to let you know, this is what was done. Uh, as far as with the money that was in the WMU and for missions, and this is a part of missions as well. So just to let you know what's taking place as far as with that. Any other announcements we need to be aware of or things coming up or anything else may have forgotten? If not, our Old Testament scripture is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 and following. Here, of course, and the emphasis is going to be this week, uh, this, today, as well as the next few Sundays, is emphasizing the scores on mothers or looking at mothers or even women as well. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and in verses 9 through 18, we look at the prayer of Hannah as she puts her trust in the Lord and looks to the Lord as well. And starting in verse 9, it says, Once they had finished eating and drinking in shallow, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. No razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart. In other words, she was, no words were coming out. She was praying here. And her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Now Eli thought she was drunk and, and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. And then she goes on to say, Not so, Lord. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or alcohol or beer. I have been pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace. May the God of Israel grant what you have asked of him. And she said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. 
Then she went away and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Such an awesome thing that we see and we read here concerning Hannah. I think much we need to, to develop in our lives, whether it be male or female. As many times we have things that are grieving us, things that are upon our hearts and our, and our minds, and, our souls, and we need to give them up to the Lord. Many times we carry these around with us unnecessarily, and we burden ourselves that way. Instead, give it up to the Lord. Hannah was grieved. She was in much anguish, in much pain, because she was not a mother, because she had no children. And so she gave it up to the Lord. She poured, it said, it poured out her soul out to the Lord. And I think sometimes we need to do the same thing as far as giving it to the Lord. And then, and then after she gave it up, it said that she was no longer downcast. It was like a burden was lifted off of her. And now she was walking around with her head held high. And she was able now to do the things she used to do that she did not do before because she was downcast. Give it to the Lord all the days of our lives. In the Old Testament, there are many women in the Old Testament. One was very prominent, but there was many women. Who was, basically, if you remember, what was the name of Moses' mother? Because when Moses, had, you know, Moses became a great man, of course, at the, after 80 years of seeing the death. But who was, what was, do you remember the name of Moses' mother? Not a common name, but it's one that probably, when I say it, they'll say, oh yeah, I remember that now. Remember, remember Moses' mother's name? Huh? No? It'd be close. Jehoshaphat. I was close. Jehoshaphat. And, and that's found in Exodus chapter 6, in case you want to know. Uh, so that, that, was, that was Moses' mother's name. But like I said, it, it, it's not a familiar name. It's not one where it's Mary or it's Martha or whatever it is. But Jehoshaphat is, 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 was her name. So this again, this is found in Exodus chapter 6. And you can find where his father... Uh, and, and mother are, are announced as forward with that. This is a little helpful information concerning the mother of Moses. Let us continue as we sing unto the Lord. Three hundred and fourteen, whosoever will.
New Testament scripture for today is found in John, John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. John chapter 10, here as Jesus so relates and tells as he's at the feast of the, at Jerusalem in the temples of uh, Solomon's colonnade, and he talks to basically the unbelieving Jews of that day and relates to them concerning different things. And here we, it's recorded in John chapter 10, verses 22 and following. He says, Then came the feast of the dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was in the temple and talking in Solomon's colonnade. Now the Jews gathered around him saying, How long, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Now he had been telling them that all along. They just haven't been hearing. You know, it's like many times, you know, the Lord tells us things and we just don't hear. But He's been, he been telling them all along, I am. I am the one that was sent by God. I am the Messiah. And Jesus answered, I tell you, I, I tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. But you do not believe. Why? Because you are not my sheep. Now that's a strong thing he tells them. You do not belong to me. He's letting them know. The reason they don't hear is because of unbelief in the heart, but also because of the fact that they do not hear what he's saying. My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. The one, no one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And he says, again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which one of these do you stone me? And he said, we are stoning you because you, because we are stoning you, we are not stoning you for any of these, but because of blessing, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. And indeed, Jesus Christ wasn't God who came in the flesh. But the reason they did not hear is because of unbelief. They did not believe that he was the one sent by God. This is why many today even do not hear what God is saying because of unbelief. Because their hearts are not right before God. Pray that God will turn the hearts of the unbelievers that they may hear and believe. In the New Testament, another woman, this one might be a little bit easier, I think. There is when Peter after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and there they were in the first century, James was killed by the sword, and then Peter was put in prison, and then he was released by the angel, and he walked out, and he went and knocked on the door to get into the, where the disciples were. And as he was knocking on the door, there was, some, there was a lady, a young lady, who came and recognized Peter's voice, but she did not answer the door. Instead, she just ran off and told the disciples, do you remember the name of that young lady or young girl who came to the door and did not let Peter in as he was knocking in to get in. No? Her name was Rhoda. Her name was Rhoda. She was, was that young lady with the rest of the disciples and she went back and she says, there's someone who's, who says he's Peter or he sounds like Peter and he's knocking at the door. And they said, you must be thinking you're seeing an angel because they all assumed since Peter was in prison that he was dead, in which he wasn't. The angel let him out. He walked out, knocked on the door, and the brother thought, and all the rest of them thought it was an angel, but it wasn't, and they finally let him in. But the one knocking at the door, and she heard the voice and didn't let Peter in. She ran off, and it was Rhoda. Uh, so just to keep you informed us forward with that. That's found in Acts chapter 12, uh, in case you're interested in Forrest reading about that episode of Forrest, what took place with that time and, and that incident as well. In the back of your bulletins, there are written a few prayer requests that ask you to remember these in prayer, and of course many others as well. As we are doing these, if you feel led, you would like to come and kneel here and, and pray with us, you can do that, or we pray, we pray of course, right where you're at, but you're welcome to come in the front here and pray as we uh, gather together. I ask that you remember many in prayer. Many are not with us this morning for whatever reason. Uh, I do know that, uh, pray for Melissa, she had an attack of a bronchitis, and she and, and Renee were in an emergency room until early this morning, so Renee's just 
tired out as well as Melissa. But remember Melissa and Fred, she had bronchitis, and after being there in the emergency room, there's really none of the doctors that they could do for her since she was pregnant. It's just a shame they had to wait that all the time for quite a few hours, and then they said, there's nothing we can do. Uh, I just don't understand that, why they let her wait so long, because you could see that she didn't need, she was pregnant. But anyway, uh, so uh, remember Melissa in prayer as she is dealing with bronchitis. Um, but talking to Danny this morning, Danny said she was doing better uh, this morning, but just they just tired out and took it out of being in the emergency room uh, through most of this morning, so which you can imagine. So remember them in prayer. Um, Miss Hattie Carter, remember Miss Hattie in prayer? She she had a fall this past week, and then some other things took place, and so now. Uh, she's had some complications, so remember Miss Hattie uh, in prayer, uh, she's had some complications. Remember little John as well as uh, your grandson John as well, and all the men and women in the military and their families, remember all of them in prayer and of course what goes on in their lives. Again, the many who are not here with us this morning, there are quite a few who are not here with us this morning, Melvin and Sandy Deal, uh, Bill and Mel Gibson, uh, as well as others as well. Who, who are not here with us, remember them in prayer, pray for them. I, I don't know why some of them are not, uh, maybe the rain, who knows, I don't know. Uh, but just remember the many who are not here with us uh, this morning as, as we have quite a few who are not here. For, uh, other prayer requests, concerns, or thanksgiving that you would like to share with us this morning? Others? Kathy? Uh, traveling mercies for uh, Susan. Okay. All right. sister's uh, physical problems as well. They both have physical problems, all of them do. So do remember them in prayer with their physical problems. So remember Ginger and the family in prayer, what goes on with them. Um, Hoff, um, Billy Lynch's family as well. Remember uh, Harvey and also Debbie and, all, and Ruth as well, all of them in prayer. Remember his family in prayer as, as they deal with physical problems that they have. So do remember uh, the Lynch's family and would take places for with them, we sure will. Others? Anyone else? Debbie? Oh my God, I remember my niece Kimberly. Um, she's going in this week, I think she has a brain tumor. She's only in her early 30s. And um, she's been having complications, having trouble seeing. And uh, all her blood tests came back poorly. And so they're going to do an MRI. They <coughs> said she has a tumor in her short. Okay. All right, we sure will. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
Okay, what else? Pauline. Again, just remember each other and pray, pray for each other. Remember all that goes on as far as with everything. Pray for the many unexpected things that will come and that will take place in our life. You know, Al mentioned this morning, you know, every day we, we're, we're faced with challenges. Every day, you know, we're faced with things that happen in our life uh, as far as things. Some things we expect, but many things that's unexpected uh, as far as what comes on and what takes place in our lives. So pray for God's guidance, for God's help, and for God's leadership on a daily basis. Pray that he will help us, not just in the big things, but in, even in the small things, in all things. And that we put it in his hands and ask for his will, for his, for his grace, and for his help in our lives on a daily basis. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you this morning. We thank you. We thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you've given to us. We thank you that we are able to be here this morning. Come together to worship, praise, and glorify you. We thank you. Be with us. Lead us, guide us, and direct us in all that takes place. Lord, we lift up in prayer the many, many people that are dealing with different types of physical problems and physical ailments. Be with each and every one. Help them. Watch over them. We pray for those that are struggling, going through difficulties, or whatever it may be at work, at home, or things they are just coping with themselves. We lift, we lift them up before you. Ms. Hattie Carter and all that's dealing with her and pray for her as well as others in nursing homes and in hospitals. We pray also for men and women in the military. We lift them up and ask for your help and for your guidance in their life. Traveling mercies for those on the road, traveling mercies for those who will be traveling. Be with them and help them. We lift up others, Lord, have been mentioned here this morning, this one that has gone through this very violent and tragic episode in her life and the loss that she has had. And as well as others like her, we pray for and we lift up her as well as others who have gone through tragedies and dealing with the tragedies and, and the deaths that have come along. And we pray for them and we lift them up before you and ask for your help and for your guidance in their life. Lord, we pray for the many, many, many people who are not here with us this morning for whatever reason, I have no idea Hopefully they're not sick, but we pray and lift up each and every one, and we ask for your help and for your guidance in their life. Pray for Melissa as she deals with bronchitis. Pray for her and what goes on with her, as well as her pregnancy. We lift her up before you and pray for your help and for your guidance in her life. Again, be with the many, many requests mentioned this morning, as well as the many unspoken, the many things lifted up to you in private. We lift up and just ask for your help and for your guidance. This we ask for and much more. We do, again, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and are doing. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us continue as we sing unto the Lord. <coughs> well, I'll start our hymn turning the hymn number 522. Let's stand as we sing when the morning comes. <laughs>
thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. See to it that all is collected and used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. <laughs> Turn, if you will, to 
the Old Testament book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 1. This morning, again, as, as I mentioned, for the next few Sundays, we want to look at different women, mothers, even women who become mothers, or even uh, women in particular concerning, as we are keying in, of course, on mothers and having Mother's Day coming up in just a few, three weeks. Uh, May the 11th, of course, is Mother's Day itself, and looking at different women and what takes place in their lives. Ruth chapter 1. As you're turning there, hopefully you read in here concerning uh, underneath the announcements what was written. He says, I do not believe any world leader will write the last chapter of history. God will write it. I believe that there is a destiny for human race far beyond anything that we can dream. But it will be God's kingdom and we and will come in God's way. And the underlining passages, seek ye first the kingdom of God and the righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, again, this morning looking at when we looked at Joseph and the destiny and what took place in Joseph's life and how sovereign God is, we need to understand that as well. Many things are taking place in our world today. There is much chaos. There are much things that are confusing. There are many things that are taking place. And what we as Christians and believers need to understand is this one thing. No matter how chaotic it may be out in the world, no matter how things may go sour or how bad things may get, God is still in control. He will write the final chapter. And matter of fact, the final chapter has already been written. It's just going to come past one day. It's going to happen. We have final chapter. We have everything that we need to know in the Word of God. It's written for us. You know, it says to read, you know, many people are afraid of, of the book of Revelation. Read the book of Revelation. Don't be afraid of it. And ask God for insight in it. Now, it is a book of symbols. It is a book where some things are literal and some things are not literal. It is symbolic as far as we're different things. And how you do it. Ask God for insight as far as what's, what is to happen and what is to take place as far as you understanding it. But read the book of Revelation. I think it will bless you. I think it will help you in today's chaotic world. I think it will give you a different perspective as far as we different things. Again, many people, they'll read some parts of the Bible, but nobody wants to go all the way back to that last, that last book, Revelation. Don't be afraid of it. God's given it to us. He's opened it up. Do it. Just read it. Don't worry about it if you understand the symbols. Don't worry about it if, if maybe I have one, one interpretation, you have another one, and she has that, do, that doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's given to us. And in the end, what's going to happen? God will reign forever and ever and ever. That is the victory. That is the, that is the awesome thing about it. Is that as a believer, as a Christian, we know the ending of it all. That God will defeat everything that we see that is going wrong. Sin, the devil, everything that's chaotic will be one day, will be wiped away, be done away with. And that way it will be perfect harmony, peace. It will be like it was there in the Garden of Eden before sin came in. Fellowship with God, walking with Him, talking with Him, and having fellowship one with another in a perfect sense. In a perfect sense. Untainted by sin. All be what and the all marvelous thing about it says all this old things will be passed away. Death, sin, everything will be gone. Such an awesome thing. Just a low insight. Read it. Ruth chapter one. Here we have concerning, and I want to key on Naomi. And, and, and with it in, in Ruth chapter one, I want to look at Naomi. And I think that Naomi it is a picture of of a near perfect mother. I know many people don't think of Naomi that way. But basically she is. And you'll maybe see why as we're looking at, as we're looking at this uh, in Ruth chapter 1. You know, once there was a boy, he went in into a, a large department store and very shyly he went and presented his problem to a woman clerk there in the lingerie department. Any of you men, you've been to the lingerie department? Very embarrassing. That's one place I really don't go either. I know some people do. But that's one place many, I think many men do not go to the lingerie department as far as trying to pick out something for your wife. Or 
Don't even go there. But here this boy went there. He wanted to buy a slip as a present for his mom. He didn't know what size that she wore. So the clerk asked, is she tall? Is she short? Fat? Skinny? Oh no, she's just perfect. Oh, the boy, the, you know, boy being smart. So the clerk gave him a size 34. Two days later, mom came to the store herself and changed the slip to a size 52. <laughs> See, we, we look at mom as being the perfect person. You know, how many of us today feel that, you know, your mom is the perfect person? You know, many people feel, you know, and I know everybody comes from different, different family backgrounds and some mom may or may not be perfect or whatever case may be, but in most cases, though, many children growing up, their mom is perfect. Regardless of what they look like or what goes on, mom was special people. And Abraham Lincoln says, all that I am or hope, I owe to my angel mother. He says, I remember my mother's prayers, and they always follow me. They have clung to me in my life. George Washington said the same thing. He said, my mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw, and all that I owe is to my mother. The attributes and my success in life, my intelligence, my physical education, all I did received from her. You know, so we, we have this, and the Bible presents many, many women who are godly women, but also they're perfect women as far as in different things and relates things to us. And here today, I want us to examine, again, the near-perfect mother of Naomi. And I really believe that she was one of the near-perfect women because of all the things that she went through. You know, it's not easy being a mother. It's not easy. It's the most difficult job that there is in the universe. And it's not recognized at all. It's a very hard job. If, you, if you're a mother and you have children, you know. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Sometimes it seems like 8 days a week. Sometimes it seems like 30 hours a day, or whatever the case may be. Mothers are up. Most of the night worrying about their kids. The kids don't even know that their mothers are up worrying about. And many other things that take place with the moms. So, and here we see. The first thing we've seen here is that Naomi was a strong mother. She was a very strong mother. Look at what happened in the first five verses. It says, In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a man from Bethlehem in Judea, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. Now the man was Elamet, his wife Naomi, and they had two sons, Malon and Kilon. They were from Bethlehem of Judea. They were, and then, and then they went to Moab and lived there. However, in verse 3, now Elamech, Naomi's husband, died and she left with her two sons. Now evidently he died while his sons were young. They married Moab women, one named Oprah and the other one Ruth. And they had lived there about 10 years. Both Melon and Kilon also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. What do we have here? We have a very strong mother. Tragedy has struck Naomi. Not just her husband, but also her two sons. Three times tragedy has struck in life, and this is a very tragic time in her life. Losing not only her husband, but also her two sons. She is strong, I think, because of a lot of pain that right now she is going through and what's taking place. Naomi is left with no one there to help her. She's left there with no one but her two daughters-in-law. She did not give up. She is still struggling on. And we see here that she plays the role of a strong mother to her two daughter-in-laws whom she loved very dearly. They have become a very close family. Husband, two sons, and then her two daughter-in-laws. After the loss of her husband and two sons, she still has this relationship with her two daughter-in-laws. And they, here we see what's taking place here, and it has formed a relationship as to where Naomi has become the mother to the two daughter-in-laws. And she's a strong mother. 
And, and after the death is taking place, you've got to understand that this is, this is a very trying thing on her because back then, unlike today, it's a, it's a man's world. There was nothing back there for a woman to do. There was no Walmarts back there where they could go working. There was no hospitals to where, hey, they could use as nurses. There was no restaurants to where the waitresses, you know, you have waitresses who do it. There were no fast food places. There were not, nothing really for a woman to do. No, there were not even any schools to where women can teach. It was strictly a man's world. There was only two things back then a woman could do. One, get married and have children, take care of the house, or be a prostitute. That was the only two things. It was a man's world. Now, we see here, contrary to what you may have read about Naomi, I believe that she was a strong mother and that her strength came from the Lord God Almighty. And that while she was in Moab and going through all of these tragedies, I truly believe that she looked unto God. Look to God to give her strength, to give her help, and to enable her to continue on and not give up. She looked. God here is enabling Naomi to continue on even when her faith seems to be a little bit on the gray side. Even though all of these tragedies have taken place in her life, her husband is dead, her two sons are gone, all that's left now, are two daughter-in-laws, and yet she is continuing on in spite of all that is taking place with her. She is a very strong mother. The second thing we see in verses 6 through 14 is that Naomi was a concerned mother. Not just strong, but she's also concerned. Notice what took place after the death of her son and the, uh, the death of her two sons and her husband. Now, when she, when she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of her people by, by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. See, so she's going back with what? With her two daughter-in-laws. She's not leaving them behind. With her two daughter-in-laws, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take her back to the land of Judah. When Naomi said to her daughter-in-laws, go back, each of you, to your, to your mother's home, and may the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your, to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant each of you that you may find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. And she said, and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. See, they want to go with her. See how close they have become. And, and basically, Naomi has become this mother to them, even more than their own mother, for they want to stay with her. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have more sons who will become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I, too, am old to have an to have another husband. Even if I had a husband tonight and gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this they wept again. Then Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. So what do we see here? We see here as a mother, as a woman here, Naomi was concerned for the happiness of her daughters-in-law. She was concerned for them. She knows that she will not be able to help them with what they really needed in their life. A husband and a provider. See, back then, a husband was the provider. He provided for everything. It would have been different if one or both sons were still alive. At least that way, it could be provided for, but now there was no way for her to provide anything for her daughter-in-laws, and it would be hard on them. Naomi was willing to sacrifice her own happiness and companionship that she had with her two daughter-in-laws. She sacrificed. They are like her children. And what we need to understand, it's like a typical mother usually, moms make sacrifices. 
many sacrifices. Now, I know not all moms there, but you have many moms that make sacrifices. They do many things that even the children do not see, the children do not understand. Even I, growing up as a kid, did not understand uh, as I grew up in a home with seven other children and my dad died when I was 13 years old. I did not really understand the sacrifice that my mother took as far as raising us. Sometimes I thought she didn't do a good job and sometimes I thought she did. But, but she did concerning all that took place. Had to work a job, come home, cook, do many other things, all by herself. Seven kids. At 13, I was 13 years old when my dad passed away. I had three or four others underneath me as well. Had to take care of that. Moms some, many times make sacrifices that people do not see, the family do not see. Here we see that Naomi wanted them to be what? To be happy more than anything. To have their own family to go on with their lives. She wanted this for them more than anything. Why? Because she was concerned for them. You see, and only, I feel, only a true mother with a relationship with God would be concerned for others more than self. If Naomi were not a godly mother, she would have not told both her daughter-in-laws to go off and find someone to provide for them. Because this way they could be provided for. She would have been selfish and said, come with me and make me happy as I go off in life. Instead, she wanted them to be happy and she was concerned for them. Understand, make no mistake about it, Naomi is down. Tragedy is coming to her life. She is discouraged. But I think even in the midst of discouraged and even in the midst of despondency, she still believes in God. She still has faith in God. And the reason I, I say that is even from this here, notice she even says in it, concerning she uses God throughout the whole passage, but even in here, concerning it, she tells them to go home that God would be with them as, as far as with all that takes place with them. Even though she says before, because the Lord, is, Lord God has had his hand against me, but even here she says, may God be with you and go with you as well. We see this taking place with her. Naomi is indeed concerned for her daughter-in-law. She is a concerned mother. And I think to be a truly concerned mother, one is, has to have a relationship with the Lord, with Jesus Christ in their hearts and their lives, to be concerned for others rather than just for self. And the third thing we see in verses 15 through 13, 15 through 20 to the end of it, as Naomi was an imperfect mother. There's no such thing as a perfect mother. And love all mothers dearly. As well as all, all of us have faults. All of us have imperfections. Not one of us are perfect. We all have imperfections. And notice what takes place here as Naomi was indeed an imperfect mother. Nothing against it. But notice it says, but as Ruth clung to her in verses 15 and following, says, look, says Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to your people and her gods, false gods, go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, Elohim, will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord, God Almighty, deal with me, be it ever so severely to anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women explained, ex exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she says, my, call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. Has afflicted me. The, the Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by, her, by Ruth the Moabitess, 
her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Now, you may think, reading this here, that indeed she was not a godly woman, but she was. You know, again, all mothers have their moments. You know, there's only so much anybody can take. There's only so much that anybody can handle. And here, again, Naomi thinks that God's hand is against her. She has come back empty. She has come back empty-handed, and she thought, everything is going soft. Nothing is going right. I left here, went to Moab because of the famine. Now I'm come back, I'm empty-handed. You know, there's no such thing as a super mom or a super woman. Again, all moms, all people, all moms, all families, we face obstacles in our lives. And some things we do okay in, and there are some obstacles we have hard and rough times with. Let's face it, the obstacles do play upon us, and especially upon the moms, especially when it comes to their children and their family. In chapter 1, what do we see with Naomi? Her, fault, her thinking is faulty. She is thinking, God is always against me. But again, however imperfect she is, I really believe that Naomi is a woman of faith. And her faith is in God. Because you see, if you read the rest of the chapters of Ruth, which is very short, the second, third, and fourth chapter of Ruth, you will see that where Naomi makes frequent mentions about God, she relates to, and, she, and we see here where Naomi plays a very important part in the life of Ruth. She instructs Ruth what to do and how to do things, and how indeed how God has brought all of this apart, apart to Ruth to help her with it. And I really believe that God has brought all this upon Naomi in order to help Ruth, as well as herself, to go through certain things in life. You know, things happen in our lives, too. And they happen for a reason. To help us to be stronger. To help us to help others. So that we can be strong for others as well. Naomi went through some tragedies in order for her to help Ruth. To where Ruth can know things. And again, Ruth saw that God was in her life. She knows that God is working in Ruth as well. Naomi sees that God is working, and she says, God has enabled you to do this. Continue to do this. This is God working in it. You can read this concerning many things that take place. But Ruth saw God in her life. Why do we say this? Because you remember in verses 16 and 17, Ruth tells Naomi, he says, Your God will be my God, and may nothing but death separate us, and may the Lord, the God Almighty, deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything separates us. So there was this connotation there where Naomi did have faith in God. But again, there are going to be periods of time where our faith will falter up and down as to where different things will happen in our lives, just like the disciples. How many times did Jesus ask the disciples, where is your faith? How many times have you asked them, O oh, ye of little faith, why did you not believe? How many times? There were so many times. And I think here we see the same thing as well. Naomi may have been faltering along the way, but she looked to Lord God Almighty for help. And along the way, as she looked to God, she also enabled Ruth to walk in life as well. She helped Ruth. See, this is a mother. And this is a godly mother. This is a mother who looks to God through times of tragedy, through times of very, very far times. And yet, she's able not only to go along in life, but also to help someone else who needs help. There is no telling what takes place. Naomi is the kind of mothers, I think, that many mothers are, even today. Not perfect, just sometimes weary. Sometimes things happen. And even mothers get tired, contrary to popular belief. They do not have the energy for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They get tired. 
Again, one of the hardest jobs I really believe is raising children. It's a blessing from the Lord, but it's also a hard job. It's a difficult job. Sometimes not just dealing with the children, but also dealing with husbands as well. At least we didn't have to deal with the husband here, but sometimes it's hard even dealing with us guys. As boy with us, sometimes we are like children. Sometimes they want to deal, deal, deal with us differently than they do their children. But here, Naomi is, again, a mother who looks after Ruth, but also is getting strength and help from the Lord God Almighty. Naomi did look unto the Lord God. And what happened? We know the rest of the story. God blessed her as well as Ruth. At the end, Naomi looked up and said, Indeed, God has truly blessed me. And blessed the house through Ruth, who married Boaz. And later on, out of that seed came David, the king of Jerusalem. What about you today? I know you go through many obstacles. I know many things happen and take place with you. But are you truly looking unto the Lord? In you, is the Lord saying, where is your faith? Do you truly trust me? Do you truly look unto me? Not just when times are good, but what about when times are not so good? How about doing the, these tragedies? Do I truly look to the Lord? The only way you can do that is by having a relationship with Jesus Christ, by Him living in your heart and in your life. How do we get through the tra tragedies? How do we persevere by the power of God through Jesus Christ? He helps us because He gave us the promise. He says, And lo, I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. Even if we don't think it, even if we may have faulty thinking, God is still there. Jesus is still there. Even if we can't see him, he's right here. He's with us. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And Jesus does not get tired. Instead, he gives us all that we need in order for us to continue on. To keep walking day after day after day. How do we do it? by the power of God through Jesus Christ. By Him living in our hearts and in our lives. By trusting in Him daily. Not just today, but this evening. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tuesday. Tuesday night. And so on. Every day, putting trust and hope in Him. Have you truly come to that point where you trust Him on a daily basis and are looking unto Him on a daily basis as well. Let us stand. Almighty God, we come before you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your words and for what you have revealed to us. If there is anyone here today whom you have spoken to, revealed yourself to, by saying unto them, Come unto me, have faith, I pray they will come unto you this morning. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to number 316. Jesus is tenderly calling. And we sing all four stanzas. If indeed he's calling you or he's telling you to come unto him, you come as we sing. 316. <coughs>
is written in the Word of God. For what I receive from the Lord, we also we pass on on you. Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we do. Precious, precious gift that you've given to each and every one. We thank you, Lord. 